Hey team, back with another video. This one's more of a follow-up from the 25th anniversary video on Windows NT4. Uh, this is just more a rough install guide, the pitfalls that I fell into, things like that for new players to the operating system. To get Windows NT4 you can get it from um, WinWorld PC um, or WinWorld, the link's in the description. And I'd also recommend just picking up um, via archive.org the bundle pack that I put together just gives you a few extra little bits and pieces. The other thing you might want is a compact flash adapter um, to IDE um, or SD equivalent. Um, it just makes putting files on the computer that much easier and also a little bit faster. Alrighty, well you just need to set your computer basically to boot from CD-ROM. Um, that's easy enough to do if on a modern machine, or sorry, modern socket 7 or newer. Um, I am going to go through the install process, I know it's been done before but just in case anyone hasn't done it, um, there's heaps of videos out there already but you know I'll just zip through it. I wanted to more focus on the pitfalls of the operating system itself once you get it installed, because um, there is a few, um, but anyway we'll just crack on through here once the CD's booted. You just get the usual sort of wizard, you can specify any storage devices you want. Of course setting your computer type as well, you can change some settings there. Partitioning is a little bit odd with NT4, um, you're limited to 2 gigabytes with FAT16 uh, and it doesn't have FAT32 support uh, on boot. Um, and NTFS is a maximum of 4 gigabytes as it turns out. I could not find a way around it. Um, I did read some other ways to get around it, but yeah. Um, no joy, but anyway. Um, if any you like your drive will format and um, you're pretty much ready just to install the OS and copy the files over and boot it up. Oh right, don't forget to take out that CD um, when you reboot because of course setting your computer to start from CD-ROM means if you leave the disk in it will boot back in and I've done that many many times and of course putting the disk in to finish the setup. There is a way you can copy the files to the hard drive and run the setup from there um, if you wanted. Um, there is as I said ways to do that. Um, but yeah, I just chose to go from the CD-ROM. The Wizard's pretty self-explanatory, it's the same as um, any sort of OS really, you just put the details in as they are required. Of course giving your computer a very um, fine name there. Um, and then um, you can do the repair disk if you want. The components are where the fun stuff is. And uh, Pinball is mandatory for install, I don't care if you have a potato hard drive, you've got to have Pinball if you, you know, install an NT4. Um, you can do networking as well, although I found the operating system to just be a little bit, uh, it doesn't give you so many errors when you get your networking mixed up if you don't do the networking. Um, the uh, screen you got to test uh, before you can apply any color and resolution settings which is kind of a bit of an oddball thing but I guess test to make sure that your um, graphics card and your screen are capable of displaying those things uh, you just save it and yeah the way it goes really and by then it will copy some more files over as it does it will reboot um, get used to that because you will see the reboot um, quite a bit um, many, many, many times Windows NT wants to reboot. Uh, and also don't forget to take out the CD-ROM. Alright, at the uh, login screen, as always, that you specified, here's your desktop. It looks like Windows 95 with Windows NT sort of slapped across the front of it. Um, yeah, it's pretty vanilla. As you can see, just the usual apps and programs and things that you get. I always start with just cleaning up all the rubbish on the desktop um, of course optional for yourself and there is one thing um, that I do uh, it's with the shell I show the toolbar and I also set the um, view options to display each folder in one window because every time you open a folder or create a new window um, and you get lots of lots and lots of windows just sort of popping up it sort of gets a bit annoying when you're trying to just sort of navigate around and you get 
all these folders open. And the next one you really want to do straight away um, is change the startup screen to show the OS selection for just you know a few seconds because if it's doing 30, you'll find when you restart that the uh, OS selection just sits there um, for 30 seconds and if you're not you know on it and press enter to continue to boot, you just have this list sitting there for 30 seconds which has 30 seconds to your startup time. So yeah, and you're gonna need that because you're gonna be rebooting as I said a lot. Um, yeah, um, there is a plug and play sort of rough hack feature that's available on that bundle disk that I made, uh, of course restarting, um, you can also find it on the Windows NT CD-ROM, um, you need this to enable things like um, apparently sound card support, it's in the documentation for the Sound Blaster 16, you need to enable that, um, and yeah, you can just manually go through this sort of gives you a rough taste of what your drivers are going to be like when installing hardware. It's a painful process because there's no central device manager. You've got to do it all through these particular applications like the multimedia properties. I have no idea what that damn hey buffer does, but just crank that baby up. Reboot for the millionth time. And this is also where you can start doing um, things like updating you know to service pack 4 or 6 I'd probably recommend just going straight up to the um, service pack 6 because a lot of applications do require it um, seems like the service packs did come out pretty regularly for NT4 but yeah a million hours later you can restart again after installing service pack 6 Another useful tip is disable the Windows exit sound because it tries to play it on exit of Windows and it takes forever. Um, but there we go, Service Pack 6 is installed. But yeah, that uh, exit sound just uh, enables a faster shutdown process um, so it's not playing the whole um, WAV file as it exits. Um, but yeah, another thing you can try, um, which I've had mix, you know, I haven't actually made it work, but there's a DMA add-on that's also on one of the Windows NT discs. can't remember if it's on the NT4 disc or if it's on the option pack but you can try and enable DMA um, on your drives. Um, but yeah once I rebooted, of course because you have to reboot after installing anything, um, I checked it and there didn't appear to be, it didn't appear to enable which is a bit weird. Um, but yeah, you can see here um, when we go through the boot up process um, just how, you know, turning off the exit sound and the that, that time for the OS selection there, how much it makes it quicker because you'll be stuck on that screen right there for 30 seconds if you didn't change that setting. And trust me, the amount of times you're rebooting, as I said, it gets really annoying just to sit there and you look over and you go, oh crap, the computer's restarting and it's sitting there on like 12 seconds because I didn't change the setting um, and the same goes to Windows 2000 as well you know you can change that same setting so useful tip um, but I'd like to leave a couple of seconds on there in case I'm dual booting an OS but yeah riveting conversation we'll log back in I don't know what I'm doing here of course I recorded this and now I'm doing a voiceover but um, professional YouTuber not really but we keep trying and then we go back into DMA and you can see it's not in use uh, so I don't know why it doesn't work maybe you have to copy it to the C drive but might be worth just checking out anyway just to see if that gives you a bit of extra get up and go um, I installed that um, Windows Installer 2.0 because you'll need that for um, Damien Tools, the ISO mounting software if you want to mount ISOs. Uh, completely optional, um, but I also do Internet Explorer 4. And it is, you can get newer versions of course, but um, mainly for the shell update. 
um, and that just sort of makes it feel a bit more like Windows 98 or um, a fully patched version of um, 95. You get the bigger buttons um, for Explorer. Um, it changes some of your, your start menu around a bit. Um, you know, it just enables a few different things. Uh, the OS does feel a little bit slower after turning this on though. So if you're running NT4 on an older machine, um, it might not be worth doing this. But you can see what it does. It gives you bigger buttons up the top here. Um, you know, previews, things like that. But the machine I'm running uh, this on is a Socket 7, 233 MHz, you know, processor, um, 64 megabytes of RAM, and I've got that fast compact flash to IDE adapter. So it really helps with um, the performance of the operating system. So I went ahead and just installed that. You don't have to, of course. And yeah, it's just a matter of just installing a few basics. Um, I find WinRAR is quite handy. You can do 7-zip, you can do WinZip if you wanted. Um, but you'll find um, applications for NT4 are rather thin on the ground and also uh, half of the time don't work. Uh, many, many times something was made for NT4, I'd go and install it and it just wouldn't work. It's just super annoying. DirectX 5 is another fun one. Um, technically NT4 does not support DirectX 5, uh, it's up to version 3. Um, however, when the beta of Windows 2000 was being developed, there was um, these development tools for DirectX 5 uh, that were made compatible. So they're not officially supported, but you can um, just download this and install it and it gives you technically DirectX 5. Um, there is a couple of different packages you can use. Um, I would just install all of them. Um, there's also a bundled in DirectX 6. Um, and I haven't seen any benefit of installing that because most of the time the games that you're installing don't actually support NT anyway and those DirectX 6 games, uh, as I said, just don't install so you don't really get the benefit of it. But DirectX 5 is probably a, a good intermediate step. There's also, I forgot to put on the CD in that preview, but this version as well, uh, if you skip back a few seconds, just look for this other DirectX 5 install. Um, you actually need this in order to um, get the control panel version showing there. Um, so yeah, uh, but I installed a Voodoo driver because I've got the Voodoo 1. Um, an interesting thing is I couldn't tell if this had actually installed because um, there's no way of testing it unless you run a game. But as I said, a lot of the games don't work. Of course, installing daemon tools. Um, very important to have um, and just you'll need it for some of the upcoming installs off farm and image I've bundled on that pack. You need that Windows installer 2.0 uh, downloaded and installed first of course for that to work. It'll just give you this error uh, as you go and install that. And um, you can see my mistake here, I forgot to turn off that sound and it was only now I realized that um, my shutdowns were taking forever because it was playing that sound in the background. There's some optional power tools, uh, toys, sorry, you can have. Um, the same sort of thing as you get on Windows 95 and 98. There was a set made available for Windows NT. Um, and it does give you a few nice little features and things. Um, definitely check out their readme file because um, some of them aren't compatible with NT4 because they need, um, I think, a 16-bit operating system like Windows 95. Um, but yeah, just check through, have a look. Um, it's a great tool set if you want to just make some basic changes. Like, um, I like having the auto log on feature because I'm not on a domain or anything. Um, the next tool sets that we install sort of along the line do erase that setting. So just keep that in mind as you're watching this sort of, well, it's not a tutorial, it's just sort of a, here's what I found sort of thing. But yeah, there are some um, useful tools in here. You can install the whole lot, um, or you don't actually want to do that. 
by the way because it puts in a few apps and things that aren't compatible and you get these error messages when you reboot and it's super annoying so you might want to just do the ones you want by looking at the readme file and you get there stuff like this and then you have to go through strip it all out um which can be a bit annoying but yeah like this um quick res that's only available for windows 95 i don't know what the autoplay extender does but yeah just blow that away and then you won't get those errors because it's a bit annoying all right the next tool set is the windows nt resource kit um this is one i'd actually highly recommend having because it does bundle in some nice things um you get a bunch of tools and features um which are just nice to have um you also get um desktop themes which is another installer which you see on that autoplay menu um that's actually really handy to have um you know it just makes your desktop a bit more customized so you don't have to stick with the green and gray color scheme of course um it's not quite as fully fledged as this, you know 9x counterpart there's some themes missing some screen savers missing but you know it is pretty nice to have just those those extras and of course you have to restart after you install everything you could be risky and just do it all in one hit but you will probably break the os uh this multi-desk app this is kind of a fascinating one because it's a uh, early multi-desktop system so you can have notepad on one desktop and of course game on the other it's a little bit clunky as you can see here it's you know stuck on top of things you have to sort of customize it um but you know it does work pretty well it's good to flick around and you can see things on one and flick to the other and you got access to all sorts of things on there um but yeah if you've um just uh, done the auto login setup um you might have to go back through and run this version and just set your um login details on there because it resets the registry keys when you install the resource kit but yeah here's the best part the old um themes you know they're all on here well most of them are on here and i, I really like having them actually i think it's just makes it feel a bit more friendly and a little bit less corporate um because in t4 is kind of a strange hybrid between old and newer technology it's like back ends like in front end is all new but there's some things behind the skins that you feel when you bump into them are you know real old but um yeah that was sort of some of the basics um on things i found with my month of sort of testing windows nt4 um some of these things actually made my life a little bit easier uh, a little bit more interesting with uh, playing around with the os but yeah um i'll link in the description uh that giant spreadsheet for some games and things um because as as i said in my previous videos they were meant to work but they some didn't so hopefully that ha helps narrow them down but yeah Anyway, everyone, good luck with the OS. If you're having a crack at it, I wish you luck. It's a painful and interesting sort of thing. But yeah, thanks for watching and um, do all the YouTube things. And um, we'll catch you guys soon.